All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right. So, Dad, Cindy, we're going to take some questions from the people on Twitter. I guess it's called X now and on uh, Facebook. But before we get started, Dad, last night you and Cindy came over and we watched the Pittsburgh Penguin Toronto Maple Leaf game. And this was the first time that they met since Kyle Dubas left the Leafs and, and went over to Pittsburgh and signed a seven year contract. And Ron asked the panel before the game, what kind of job did Kyle Dubas do? in Toronto, and they all said he did a spectacular job. Well, and we all looked at each other at, in the room and going, what? <laughs> well, go meet Dubas in the hall. What are you going to say? You say something bad about him? <laughs> I don't understand. The salary cap, uh, he went to that. Yeah, he maxed max, them out. Max that out. Uh, he, buy, he, he didn't get by the second round. And... Um, I just, I just, I just don't think he did a good job. I, 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 I don't think he did a good job. What has he got now? Uh, a eight-year contract, seven-year contract, more money. So that's the one thing, Dad. It's all, it's all about winning, Cindy. You can't. How do you? How could you go? Like you like to go to Bietzka after or, or Rudy after yeah. the cameras are off and say, seriously, you think a guy that had spent how many years with the Leafs? And didn't get by, got by the first round once against Tampa, who was... And an unlimited budget. Yeah, just maxed everything out. And you think he did a terrific, spectacular, fantastic job. Well, like I said, you're going to meet him in the halls. What are you going to do? Well, remember that reminds you. Remember that, Cindy, do you, you see that clip of you and uh, Matt Cook going at it in the in the hall that yeah was, that's really entertaining that like, was google that people that i didn't know anybody had that yeah table. somebody had a, a camera but so just to set it up uh you really went after matt cook after he hit mark savard and yeah basically edited his and career. i mean i remember savard spinning on the ice yeah and the bruins didn't do anything like i thought chair would have grabbed him but he no. didn't do anything and ed you went on and really like you ripped him like you'll never hear a hockey player get ripped again on on tv and then you met him in the hall in The next game was in the Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I was spending time with the uh, people from Toronto. They were in a little section there. And I was l- kind of looking sideways. And I said, I, I, I was hoping he'd leave because I didn't want any trouble. And Are you sure about that, Dad, that you weren't killing time with those Leaf fans? just so No, that I, I was hoping by. he'd leave. Uh-huh. And, and he was waiting there. And he was, he, he was hot. And I, well, so... Uh, that might as well go. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And, and the, the PR guy come up and says, all right, get out of here, you little, well, I can't say what I call him. It did not end very well. And then I saw him in Detroit after, and he was, he was okay. Yeah, maybe I had to get that off. Because uh, he knew it was a cheap shot. But the funny thing is, remember you said that uh, the one guy you used to give it to really good was Claude Lemieux, and you met. How many times did you meet Claude Lemieux? I, I, we give he give the puck away. He was in. The, he was the right. He was a right winger. He he shot. It was behind the net, and he shot it out to the right wing where he should have been. You where he, where he should have been, and a guy shot, and uh, oh, Brent Hall tipped it in, and I I give it to him. I give it to him pretty good. And the next day, we get there about five in the morning, and there, there's Claude sitting there all alone. Now, he, you know, he heard it. He probably didn't get any sleep. He probably heard it. Uh, oh, well, it happens to me all the time. Yeah, I remember one time you gave it to him pretty good, and then uh, you met him at the, uh, the Battle of the Blades. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I watched that. That was really good. Do yeah, you remember and, his kids? Oh, yeah, and he come over, and he says, holy jeez, you're going to give it to me again. No, I never said no. I said no. He did a good job. Well, what were entertain? What was entertaining there was that his kids came in, yeah, and his wife was there. Yeah, his kids. So I was pretending I was making coffee because I wanted to see what was going to happen because I knew the wife didn't like you. I'm, no, the well, wife. What, what wife would after you knocked her husband? But the kids didn't know about it. They came over and they were asking you for the autograph and pictures <laughs> taken, and you just played it up something awful. I was just killing myself yeah, laughing. Terribly. <laughs> yeah. So, Dad, then the other thing we were talking about last night, we watched uh, in the Pittsburgh game against Buffalo this week, uh, Chris Letang hit Peyton Curbs of Buffalo while he was on the ice. But uh, 
Latang hit him with the glove. And I asked you, did you ever get punched with the glove back in your day? Because your gloves were like night Like gone. lead. And, and I never forgot this. I never, ever forgot this. I got punched by, and I was taking him out in front, and I wasn't expecting it at all. And he corked me right in the eye. Who was it? Uh, Pat Hannigan. And he corked me in the eye. You couldn't believe. And I, I, I was, I, I, I was uh, befuddled for for the rest of the period. I mean, I did not know where I was, but but boy, did he ever! And, and it's an awful feeling. And I, I don't understand why they don't leave the gloves on now. You see them all. Yeah, the, they're all uh, cut up. But uh, uh, you see, you see them in the in the penalty box now. Can I with, ask you a question? Ice? Can I ask you a question? Did you say it was true that Bobby Orr cut the palms out of his gloves? He had, hmm, I better think about that. I know he had gloves on, That's a, and, and he wore gloves. I know it's hard to believe. Thin gloves in his gloves. He glove. wore gloves on gloves, sewn in. Oh, yeah. 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 Interesting. And he lost all his equipment. I lost all his equipment, and I said, why? He said, well... Cat peed on him. Imagine <laughs> how much that'd be worth I now. Know. Yeah, and and it was all his equipment, like all his equipment, like right from the. You know. It was at his mother's place. You said. Yeah, and his cat peed on it. You know the question? If you ever, I was watching the Bruins uh, yesterday. They were in New York, and uh, they were showing highlights of when Boston won their. I guess it'd be their second Stanley Cup. Um, they beat the Rangers, yeah. and as a, as the time wound down. Bobby picked up the puck and grabbed and hugged Jerry Cheevers. I said, I wonder what happened to that puck. So I so, must ask him. Yeah, sometime. ask him next time to see what, what, what did you do with that puck. So, Cindy and Dad, we have a new sponsor, Vintage Tendy Magazine. It's a magazine for goalies by goalies. And Beauty. That's, that's where they get Tendy. It's a great mag- magazine with unbelievable pictures. Yep. It's the highest quality magazine you'll find with a super high gloss finish. Again, unbelievable pictures, and this issue has Clint Malarchuk and Beautiful. some more stories. You have one on Tretiak. And so visit vintagetendymagazine.com. It's V I N T A G E T E N D Y magazine, all one word. And they're, com. they're like a, a coffee. Oh, yeah. they are. I mean, they, they're, it, it is. It's just, if you, I'd say, like, I've looked at, like, you go to the hockey, you know, go to the magazine rack and look at them, and all the hockey magazines aren't very good, but this is, it's the best. We'll take a question from Twitter. Davey Boy wants to know, if you could pick one goalie to win a game seven, who would it be? You have to pick mm-hmm. one from the original six and then one from the modern era. Well, back in the old days, as he's called him, is uh, Terry Sawchuk. He was unbelievable. I, I thought he was unbelievable anyhow. And uh, I don't know about now. I guess Carey Price. Yeah. Uh, Carey Price or, or uh, Carey Price, I think. Yeah. What about you, Cindy? Well, I'd say Jerry Cheevers because you, you played with him in Rochester and you was with the... And, you know, Jerry Cheevers, he always made goaltending to me look easy. You know, there's some guys that, you know, they get up and they, you know, they're, oh, they're so hard done by. Jerry always looked like he was having fun yeah, and he made he it was. look e- and he made it look easy because he was one of those guys that like used his brain to stop the puck with his angles and stuff like that. Oh, if you were winning 5-1, you know you'd win 5-4 with him. <laughs> Cuz he'd fall asleep <laughs> he and he had no care. interest. Yeah, he didn't he You got to like you got to love that. He just played to win and that was it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and when he got down to 5-4, boy, he he perk anything. up. Yeah. <laughs> New guys, I don't know. I like Reimer. I like he he did well when he left the Leafs. I I like Reimer. Yeah. I'd go off the board and I'd take modern day Hasek. Remember he stoned uh, the Team Canada over in the yeah the, uh, thing. And I guess in the old days. Yeah, I guess Hasek was pretty. You good. know, I don't know. Well, that's Glenn, little... like any all those goalies back then, Johnny yeah, Bauer, so... Glenn Hall, they were all because you figure there was only six goalies in the National Hockey League, yeah. so they all better be good. Okay, this is from uh, this is from Angus fan and from Twitter, and they would love to hear some Merlin Melanowski stories or something about Donnie Murdoch. Donnie Murdoch, I remember, he used to dance after every goal, and boy, he could really, he could really dance. He danced on his toes. Right, he played New York, and he, yeah. he, would, he you know, didn't wear helmets back to any He wasn't like Dugay, but he's had a full head of hair. Well, he was a Studio 54 type guy, wasn't right. he, in those eras? Yeah, he, he was really, up there with a, you know, du, yeah. Yeah, Dugay and all that. Well, anyhow, I told him, don't dance. Phil Esposito was with, on it. I said, Phil, 
tell a guy, tell a kid not to dance after he does this because they said our defense does not like it. And he by the goal, he scored the first goal, and he started to dance. And Ricky Smith grabbed him and and picked him up and fired him down. He separated his shoulder. I think he went. I think he lost uh, Rookie of the Year that year. Now, would you have told the players to do? You wouldn't tell the players. I wouldn't. I. You try to discourage it, right? It was just. I in didn't their want. Nature. I. I liked the kid. I. I thought he was pretty you good. You were trying to help him. Yeah. Well, I was. Thought I was helping him. <laughs> I mean, didn't, didn't help him too much. So, Dad, Merlin, the magician, Malinowski, he played, I think he played 10 games with you in Colorado. And I remember one game he really got corked, right? He got corked and he got knocked out. And uh, he was laying in, he was laying there on, in the trainer's room. And he, he and the doctor said, he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. And, and Rene rocked by and he's telling me he's Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rene Robert, he was always a wise guy, right? So, Dad, our next one's from JP88 and he comes from... Twitter or X, who is your top power forward of all time? Well, I, I have to say, I never had him, but I'd have to say Cam Neely. Back in he, he back to back at fifty goals, one hundred and eighty-two minutes and penalties, and seven fights. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's kind of everybody thinks of the power forward nowadays, right? Yeah, when they when they think of power forwards, how soon they forget though. Yeah, and then Terry O'Reilly had seventy seven, seventy eight seasons, lead the team with ninety points with two hundred and two hundred and eleven minutes, Cindy, and fifteen fights. Next season, Terry had seventy seven points in two hundred and five minutes and penalties and seventeen fights. No, not too so bad. That, that would be a power forward if you lead the team in goals, points. No, not goals, points, fights, and penalty minutes. Uh, but Al Secord was not too bad, shabby either. In 81, 82, and 82, and 83 season, Al had a, had a combined total of 98 goals, 483 minutes in penalties, and 36 <laughs> fights. It's unbelievable. <laughs> 36 fights. Yeah. You wonder how he got. How he got. I mean, how many games does he did he play? <laughs> <laughs> and he fought. He was fighting the tough guys. And he and yeah. he would only fight the tough guys. Al Secord. Imagine that getting ninety, almost a hundred goals in two seasons, and still having thirty six fights. And he and uh, he ended up being a pilot. A pilot in, for United Airlines. Yeah, United Airlines. Okay, Dad, Mad Motorman, the Mad Hatter from Twitter. He says he wants to know the Oilers' defense has been porous. <laughs> that's a that's a good that word means for it. Eh? That means they don't play very good. Was it fair to blame all of those losses on Jack Campbell? You know, you know, it's funny. Funny thing about Jack Campbell, he had the one good year in Toronto, and and he had all the pressure on him when he went to you know he went to the Oilers, and every game there would be something a goal going off off somebody. And he never ever. I I, I just I don't think. It, I I think the pressure like like okay he's the missing piece now we're going to win the Stanley yeah, Cup now, you know and I think that like to have that pressure on you like if yeah. you don't win the Stanley Cup it's your fault and, and it doesn't look like he would they were going to win it with him the way he was playing no but even this year Skinner last year was up for Rookie of the Year yeah and this year it looks like they're kind of coming out a little bit they won five nothing out of it. The other, let's hope they come out of it. Right now, I think there's only two Canadian teams in the playoffs, Winnipeg and Toronto. <laughs> yeah, and Winnipeg's playing good. Yeah. They're bonus. Well, Eris Hollabuck, he signed the big contract. Yeah. And he's playing well. I don't, think, I don't blame Jack Campbell. I feel sorry for him down in the minors where I spent a long time. I feel sorry for him. So, Dad and Cindy, spreads.ca is now northstarbets.com. So, northstar, N-O-R-T-H-S-T-A-R-B-E-T-S.com, all one word. It's still Canadian-owned. It's still one of the best places to play in Canada. They have everything you're looking for, from slots to live dealer tables in the sports book with built-in sports betting insight and analytics. Listeners who have already had an account with spreads don't have to do anything. Just sign in to North Star Bets. That's North Star Bets, and it's not available in Ontario. So I tell you one thing. I lost money betting on uh, Winnipeg in the Great Cup. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, the, oh, I said, there's no way Montreal's going back to back like that. Yeah, and they did. By God, you have to give them credit, boy. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, I was talking to a guy the other day, and for people in the U.S. and abroad, like the Great Cup, that's our Super yeah. Bowl, that 
The CFL is more fun to watch yeah, than the NFL. Well, it's definitely faster, I Because it's faster. You know, you, you, you have to move the ball or you're going to give it up. They don't promote themselves very well, no. do they? Well, they promoted our goals because they thought they were going to win. And Montreal just come in there and just snapped them. But do you blame the media here? Like, because it's a Canadian media and they sort of downplay its Canadian football sort of put it down like i mean if there was american americans promote yeah. americans and like, i think part of it again is the cfl as a small a small market mentality mm-hmm. so that this one's from charles van hem from twitter what do you expect uh, what do you expect from the canucks for the rest of the season and can they keep up this pace i'll tell you one thing tim they better keep it up with rick talker with that bald head when you, I hate to come to the bench and didn't give it at all. He, and he looks like he's ready. And I, I say, yes, they're going to keep it up and they're going to go. And I don't know how far they'll go in the playoffs, but I'll tell you one thing, they better put it out during the season. Yeah. You know, like it seems like they hit more now. Yeah. And like last, they lost last night, but uh, even Pedersen last night threw a big hit. Yeah. And then some guy cross checked him back. And then the rest of the guys jumped in, not like the Leafs. And they all jumped in and started to fight. And you go, he's, he's got a different mentality with them this year. Yeah, they've got a... And we, I'd, hate to, I'd hate to come to the bench with that bald head looking at me like that with those eyes. And uh, yes, I will say they will keep it up. Okay, Dad, I got a question for you. We're watching the game last night and it was big str- st- strategy going on at the bench. Well, I don't understand why it's always the assistant coaches that are telling the players on the little whiteboard on uh, the bench where the, where the real coach is sort of like looking on. Like, uh, isn't it the real coach's well, position to tell five, them what to five do? Five in the National Hockey League that, that do the get down there. And, and yeah, I never, I never figured, can't figure that one out either. I guess they have to have a job. And and they put on a pretty good act too. And they, they look ahead. very official. Like they, this. they look, they look like they got the board and everything. But, uh, but no. I always think too is like you said, Dad. Like, did they now practice that they're down by a goal with a minute to go with the goalie out? Like, <laughs> do they really have to start? Like, should well, you not have kind of thought well, of I, that before? Good. I think I think I'd take it one step further, Tim. I think the players look like they're humoring the coach. Like, is it my imagination but the, the players are going, mm-hmm, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, sure, okay. You put the five five guys on that can score, and then when you, you're behind, you put the five guys that, that, that won't let the other team score. That's usually the way it is. If you need a guy down there explaining to them on the board there, just before the thing, it, <laughs> yeah. it makes, it makes you wonder. It. Yeah, so they got the Pittsburgh assistant coach. He's telling Crosby, Malkin, <laughs> yeah. Latang, and Carlson, and I don't know the other guy, Le- put, like how to score, like yeah. what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 I, yeah I, we got it. Yeah, they pull a Jean Rattel, right? Yeah, yeah, Donnie, we got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, Donnie, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I think I'll tell you one thing, though, watching the games. It never seems like to like talk about the Bruins or anything. They never seem to panic, the Bruins. No. Like, look, Jim Montgomery seems to have... He's a pretty good coach. And the Bruins, and we'll talk about the Bruins. <laughs> yeah, because we got a question from Duke from Twitter. How are the Bruins doing it? Uh, you know, they've had an amazing record. They just had a little hiccup during the playoffs, but yeah. last year... Well, we don't talk about that. Yeah. No, and nobody with all the guys they lost, they thought never, 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 never thought they'd be third or fourth, and he's got them rolling along. Well, the last, the last, the last two. Yeah. But anyhow, he's got them rolling along, and he's a pretty, he's a dynamite coach. Okay, Dad, last question uh, for the show is Tori A. from Twitter. I have a friend who lives near Earlton, Ontario, the birthplace of Rosaire and Wilf Paymont. Uh, any stories of either or both of these guys? The only thing I know about uh, Rosaire is I had a fight with him. Uh, in uh, Quebec City, he played for the Aces. I think it was the Aces, wasn't it? Yeah, Quebec Aces. Yeah, yeah, Quebec Aces. And uh, he had a, he had a beautiful bar down in uh, Florida, right, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Well, I did. I knew it was in Florida. Yeah, it was and right on the beach. It was the only. Well, I went down there because it was the only place in spring break you could go watch a hockey game. <laughs> Back in Florida, when I went down there, right, he had the satellite. And Wolf, nobody fooled with Wolf. Believe me. And uh, because he, he, he was one of those guys, he could do it with the fist and he could do it with the stick. And he, it didn't matter to him. Didn't he give you something really nice for the cottage? You were well, looking for something? or His dad used to do, his dad really did a lot of hunting. 
and he, he shot a moose, and he, and he sent me moose antlers, and I was going to take them to the cottage, and we say, the day that he gave them to me, we traded them. We traded them to <laughs> Toronto. You know, he didn't want to go to Toronto because he said, well, I'm French-Canadian there, and they won't like me. What are you, nuts? I said, and, and he was, he was the leading right-winger that scored all the goals. And yeah, I, he set the record for the least, most, yeah. no, most points by a right-winger. Yeah, yeah, he did. And um, and he we'll was a good on, guy. We'll end on that. Yeah, he was he was really an intense guy. I remember him in the dressing room, eh? Like you could just feel the vibe off him. He, you know what he had a kind of a vibe like Schmatzy, Bobby Schmatz. Yeah. Like guys he, you just don't fool with. Don't get in a stick fight with him or don't get in a fist fight with him if you want to survive. So a lot of people might not know this dad, but he was he wore number nine in Colorado and then when you got traded to Toronto, what number did he wear? He wore ninety nine. And he was the first was he the first guy? He must have been the first guy to wear 99. Uh, no, Gret- that would have been the first year Gretzky was in the NHL. Oh, well, he wore 99, the same as Gretzky. He had a lot of nerve. 